Booker is a botanist studying the very rare omega flower in the high alpine meadows of Wyoming. The omega is either red, blue, or yellow. Booker has observed that the bees favor the red ones, so he assigns them a point value of 7 for his study. The blue ones are assigned a value of 3, and the yellow ones are assigned a value of 1, because they are less popular with the bees. Booker walks a random path through the meadow. When Booker encounters an omega, he writes down the number corresponding to its color, so he can later compute statistics on the data he collects. Booker is assigning a number to the results of his random experiment. 7 for red, 3 for blue, and 1 for yellow. This process of assigning a numerical value to the result of a random experiment is called a random variable. Usually we use the word variable for solving equations or substituting in expressions. But a random variable is more like a function that transforms random results from the world into numbers. A random variable takes the possible outcomes of a random process in the world as input and produces numbers as output. Anyone can create one. We use letters to represent functions, and in the same way we will use letters to represent random variables. For example, we can represent this random variable with the letter C for color. We always capitalize random variables. The random variable C produces a value of 7 for an input of red, 3 for an input of blue, and 1 for an input of yellow. This bracket notation shows us there are exactly three possible outcomes and three possible values produced by the random variable. We don't get intermediate colors like green. C is what we call a discrete random variable. The number of outcomes is countable, and we don't have an infinite number of intermediate colors between blue and yellow to worry about. The next day, Booker wants to study the number of petals on the omegas he encounters. Let's call this random variable x. In this case, Booker will give the flowers a score based on the number of petals, which usually range from 0 to about 10. Now, we could list these out in order. A flower with 0 petals gets a score of 0, one petal gets a score of 1, and so on. The fact that we could list these out in order means that this is a discrete random variable. Remember, discrete means countable, but we don't have to list them out. We can write a sentence here that conveys the meaning of the random variable x. And even if there were an infinite number of petals, the fact that if we had forever, we could list them out in order means they are countable. The next day, Booker decides to measure the mass of the nectar in the flowers he encounters. He collects it with a tiny eyedropper. This is a random variable too. Let's call it m. m gets us a number for the mass of the nectar in each flower. Booker encounters his first flower, and the mass of the nectar is about 5.8 milligrams. For the next flower, the nectar has a mass of about 5.9 milligrams. So is this random variable discrete, or are there an infinite number of uncountable possible values between 5.8 and 5.9? The mass is not discrete. We measure mass, we don't count it. Between any two measured masses, there are an infinite number of possible masses. We might be limited by the precision of our scale, but the masses aren't limited by that. So this is a continuous random variable, because we know there are an infinite number of possible masses between 5.8 and 5.9. If we can't list them, we can't count them. And if we can't count them, we have a continuous random variable. But remember, Booker is the scientist in charge. If he prefers to work with a discrete random variable, he can make it happen. He decides to keep it simple. Flowers with less than 5 grams of nectar get a score of 0. Those with nectar greater than or equal to 5 grams get a score of 1. Booker creates a discrete random variable to help simplify his research. Remember, a random variable is a function that takes the results of a random process in the world as input and assigns a number to each result. We get to decide what numbers to assign. If we can list the results in order, like the three colors or the numbers of the petals, then they are countable, which means we have a discrete random variable. If they are measurements, counting the results will be impossible, which means we have a continuous random variable. Botanists in alpine meadows and students in statistics classes need to understand random variables and determine whether they are discrete or continuous.